Hey YouTube, I know it's been a while since I made a video. Um, I've been pretty busy over the holiday season making a lot of stuff and doing a lot of traveling. Um, so I haven't had a whole lot of time to put together a video of things going on out here in the shop, but I had a conversation with another blacksmith today that uh, brought a topic to mind that I wanted to talk a little bit about, and that is 2x72 grinders. The topic that we were talking about really was about making your own grinder versus buying a commercial grinder. And um, I'm not making this video to disparage anybody who has bought a commercial grinder or who is thinking of buying a commercial grinder or any companies out there who are making commercial grinders. There are so many fantastic grinders out there being built today, way more now than when I first got started. Um, I believe when I first kind of got into it, there were there were kind of three big names that I knew of, and that was uh, a Bader, a Coot grinder, and then KMG had just started making their 2x72. Those are all great grinders. There's a bunch of other grinders on the market today that are super capable and super good, but what I wanted to talk about was not being afraid or not being intimidated, I should say, by building your own grinder. Uh, just to talk a little bit about this one, just for a second, this is uh, what's called a BG 272, a belt grinder 272. Uh, and this was built uh, or based off of plans that a guy named Dan Camo, Dan is a Canadian guy and he's got a, a website. If you just go to Google and search DC knives, you will find his uh, awesome website with all kinds of stuff on it. And one of the things he has is uh, plans to make this grinder. And um, so uh, I used to have another grinder that sat back here that was based kind of like a Grizzly. It was like a two wheel configuration. I used it for years and years and it was a grinder that I built from scrap. But I was wanting to be able to use tool arm with a grinder so I decided to start looking around to possibly building uh, my own grinder and I found Dan's plans and I looked at it and I thought, well, this is pretty simple. I'll give that a shot. And so I put this grinder together based off of Dan's plans and I've been using this grinder now, I think for close to three years. I have had zero problems with it. And in the time that I have been using this grinder, I, I had the opportunity to use grinders, uh, other grinders in other places. And I have used some of the top of the line grinders that are available and they are nice and they are nicer than this grinder. However, what I will say is that I can't tell that the products I make are any better when they're made on this grinder as opposed to being made on a top of the line grinder. So um, I know in the knife making circles, there, there can be, there can be a little bit of what I call grinder snobbery out there where people think that if you're not running a certain type or brand of grinder, well, then you're just not doing it right. But my point would be, um, don't look at the maker's grinder, look at what they're making and, you know, and, and see how they're doing. Because at the end of the day, regardless of whether it's the cheapest homemade grinder you can make or the most expensive top end uh, commercial grinder, at the end of the day, it's an abrasive belt running in a circle with different attachments that it lays again. A homemade version that does that well is going to grind steel just as well as a $3,000 model that has a similar setup. They are gonna abrade steel just the same because at the end of the day, you're putting the belt on the grinder and the grinder is, is making the belt go around and your work is making contact with this belt. The knife or hammer or ax or whatever you're grinding on is not making contact with this grinder itself. It's making contact with the belt. Now, there's a platen or a, or a contact wheel or a small wheel, those those things change the shape of the belt. They either make the belt small to grind small radius, or they make the belt big to grind a big radius, or they pull the belt flat to grind a flat. But that's all the grinder is doing for you is it's changing the shape of the belt. So I talk to people a lot that ask questions about how to get started in bladesmithing and blacksmithing. And obviously one of the things that they ask about is a grinder. And my first suggestion to people now always is to build your own. And I'm not trying to take away business from people who make them. I'm just trying to tell them that this is a doable thing that you can do for rather, uh, little money if you scrounge for steel and you look for parts right because you can put one of these together fairly inexpensively you don't have to break the bank to get a good capable grinder and when you build a tool like this you learn the tool you know how to tune the tool you know how to maintain the tool 
You don't have to call somebody about, you know, how to fix the tool because you made the tool. And for me, that was an important thing. I wanted to know this grinder really well. And so by building it, I know this grinder better than anybody else because I built it. So anyway, that's my kind of rant about building your own grinder. I just, I wanted to put this video out there because it seems to me that there's a lot of hesitation or intimidation that's felt by people when they look at building one of these and really it's not that hard. If you go check out Dan's plans, I'll put a link below. Uh, I think you'll see pretty quickly how easy it is to build one of these. Um, I did weld this red part, this frame together. Honestly, I had a really cruddy welder when I made this and I literally just tacked the frame together in several places and that's all I ever did. It's never been completely fully welded all the way around, but it's held up. And all this frame is, all this grinder frame is here, is it's a holder or a receiver for standard one and a half inch tool arms. So this flat platen attachment I've gotten in here, I can pull this out and put in any number of attachments that use one and a half inch pipe to fit inside this two inch pipe. So that means I can buy high end tool arm attachments for any number of commercial grinders and they'll fit mine. You know, I guess it just depends on what you want. Do you want to spend some time building a tool or do you just want to get right to grinding? You know, and if you don't want to spend time building the tool, then by all means, go research, find these fantastic, great people that are building grinders out there and buy one of their products. But if you want to build on your own, you want to know that tool better than you will ever know another, then build your own. It's not hard. It's a lot of fun actually to build the tool and it's very capable. So that's what I wanted to say, that if you're, if you're contemplating the purchase of a 2x72 grinder, give the DIY option a shot. I think you'll be surprised at how easy it is to build. Um, if I can help with your build, shoot me a question uh, here below or look for me over in the DIY tools for the knife maker and blacksmith group on Facebook. There's a, a group of like-minded individuals there. Uh, we all like to build our own tools. We'll be happy to answer questions about it. So anyway, I just wanted to put that out there and I hope that helps someone. Thanks for watching. I'll see you the next time.